Casual Climbers is brought to you by Rose's Room. Rose's Room is the online home of author and columnist Rose Padrick, where she slips off her shoes, sips a cup of tea, reads a little, writes a little, and visits with her friends. Rose's Room features curated works of hers over the past couple of decades and links to her books, columns, and publications. She is a Florida author and freelance writer born into an Irish-Italian family in New York City and soon moved to Florida's Space Coast, where she had a Huckleberry Finn-like childhood. Her experiences as this child, a mother, and a grandmother serve as the inspiration for her column, Rose's Room, that's been published in Florida Today, Hometown News, Today's Senior, and currently in the Port St. John Happening. Rose's short stories and articles have been featured in Woman's World magazine, RV Life, Pet Gazette, Camping Today, Quilt Works, and many other popular publications. Browse her works on her website, rosepadrick.com, and drop her a note. She would love to hear from you. That's R-O-S-E-P-A-D-R-I-C-K dot com. Hello everyone, and welcome back to Casual Climbers, the podcast by and for beginning hikers. I'm your host, Donna Padrick, and alongside me is my husband and adventure buddy, Roy. Good morning. Good morning. So in this podcast, we provide you with tips, tricks, and reviews of some of the many hiking trails in the Blue Ridge area. Now, we may be unfit hikers, but we do love the outdoors, and we want to share our experiences with you. In today's Trail Snacks episode, we discuss a short hike near Hendersonville, North Carolina, in the Pisgah Pisgah National Forest called Foster's Creek Trail. Now, this short loop takes you through a beautiful, but fairly easy, dense hardwood forest with the creek crossing several times. What do you say, Donna? Let's get started. All right. So here's Foster's Creek Trail by the numbers. The trail is 1.9 miles in a loop, and the time it took us was 53 minutes, and of that, 50 minutes was moving time. The lowest point is 2,222 feet, and the highest point is 2,412 feet, which is only a 190 feet elevation change. Pets are allowed. I saw no reason not to, but it is a very, very narrow trail, so you're probably not getting a mobility scooter. Oh, yeah, no. No, I don't think so. So to get there is a little tricky, but if you search for 1199 Foster Creek Road, Horseshoe, North Carolina, 28742 in your map app, it will take you to the trailhead. Now, it's important to note that is not an actual address, but the map apps that I tested, that will take you right to the parking area at the trailhead. And parking is limited. How many spaces? Four, maybe? Yeah, not very many at all. Yeah, it's a dirt area, and the road going up to it is a gravel road, so it's, yeah. it's very... Oh, like a one-lane gravel road, yeah. It's narrow. And there are dirt road, gravel driveways for actual houses, too. You can't see the houses, but there are signs that say private driveway and stuff. So, yeah, just make sure you don't, you know, bother somebody who lives near this area. Yeah, and follow the map, honestly. follow That's what I had to do, because there was a turn that looked like it was ours, but it quite clearly wasn't. Yeah. Yeah. So the trail itself, though, I, I had fairly low expectations. Because you and I tried to do a different trail right. at the start of the day. Yes, much higher elevation off the Blue Ridge Parkway, I believe. And it was very rainy and very cold. This and is... There was zero visibility. Oh, you yeah. You could see nothing. So we were like, this is... Yeah, and there was going to be these beautiful vistas. Yeah. If it was a blue sky day, it was not a blue sky day yesterday. And what are we at? September 15th today. So this, yeah. we're talking September 14th. It's so strange to me as someone who was raised in Florida, that you can, on September 15th, go to a hike, and it was like 50 degrees up there. Yeah, you actually put your thermals on in advance of this. Yes. Because it was so cold and wet. And now, down at the bottom of the mountain, yeah. from Greenville, Greenville was not cold like that. No. You get up there, it's a whole different thing. Yeah. And so we decided not to do it because we, it we, wouldn't have been fair yeah, to the t- trail itself. Because the visibility and right. the conditions were so awful, we would have had a negative review of Exactly. It. We'd have been grumpy. We'd have been like, yeah. yeah, we didn't see anything because of the fog, because of the yeah. conditions. Yeah. So we drove 
you know, an hour and 40 minutes to get there and on the Blue Ridge Parkway and the fog was so dense, I could see 10 feet in front of it. It was still its own kind of beautiful, though. I'm not sorry that we drove no, up there. No, I don't regret it. I we, never regret driving on the Blue Ridge Parkway, even though you couldn't see anything. Yeah, it's yeah. it's scary and dangerous because you've got curves and you've got bicycles still out I'm there. I was surprised. So shocked to see cyclists on a... On Thankfully, the Parkway. they had those flashing red lights in the front and the back of their bicycles. So, but I, I really hope that nobody got run off a mountain or run over yesterday because, yeah. man, those conditions. It was so bad. Yeah, like 10 feet. You could see 10 feet. And so the clearest spots were in the tunnel. <laughs> That's true. So, it was so eerie yeah. on the other side of the tunnel seeing nothing but a wall a, of fog. A gray fog wall. Yeah. yeah it was crazy. So, but back to the trail. So we got down into the mountain, into Hendersonville, and we got to this, we eventually found the trailhead. There was one car there, and we did this entire trail, didn't see a single person. By the time we got back, that car was gone. Right. And it only took us an hour to do, so it's not that long of a trail. But I was actually very pleasantly surprised at how beautiful and serene this hardwood forest trail is. Yes. The only thing that I'll say is, if you do these very remote trails, just know that you might face plant into a spider web or two. You caught a couple early. <laughs> and then I had you walking in front of me. And you made me walk in front of you, <laughs> and I caught a couple on the way back. Yeah. Yeah. Even though somebody else, there was another car there, so I'm guessing. And I don't know that there's another trail there, so I, I don't know. Maybe these spiders are making their webs really fast. Yeah. I'm not I, sure. It's very clear that this is not a well-worn path. Because and it's unmarked. It's it's very it's very unmarked. There's several little spur trailets going off of it. Yeah, a hundred percent. This is my tip and trick for this trail: use a map app. Use yeah, all trails or Kamut. Download the map ahead of time because there's no. There's going to be times where you're like, which way do I go? Yes, there's and, no trailblazers. And there are points. Th so first of all, you told me that this trail was 0.7 miles it was a very short trail it ended up being 1.9 miles so the, uh, and not the because original we got, trail app lied to us right yeah. we didn't get off trail we did exactly yep. what we were supposed to do it's not like we got lost or anything so that being said he with all of the spurs that you could go this easily could have been three miles or we or might five. still be lost yeah, in the we woods might still be lost yeah there's no trailblazers on the trees, so you won't be able to see anything, yeah. anything at all. And the trail is very narrow and rustic. In some spots, the the bushes and the foliage is pushing up on you oh, yeah. as you walk through. But not in, I didn't feel like it was in a bad way. No. No, so, like, not, there like, are some... not like John's Jump Falls was yeah. a couple weeks ago. Like where... where you feel like vines are actually trying to trip yeah. you. Like yeah. they're growing in front of your ankles to try and trip. It wasn't like that. It was just kind of, and I was kind of looking for poison ivy, which I do. I didn't really see. Any... There probably is some, but. I'm I... sure there is. It's a pretty dense hardwood forest. And I think the thing that surprised me the most about this one, because it was a last minute hike thing so i didn't do a lot of research i basically just said find me a trail near the area and let's do it yeah and uh, i was pleasantly surprised at even though the elevation change on the trail itself is nominal 190 feet it's not that much and i didn't feel it I, definitely a piece of cake hike but the the elevation change around the trail itself yes was spectacular yes so i didn't feel like I did a lot of work to walk 10 steps, but all of a sudden you look over to your left and it's like way down. It's a 50 foot yeah. valley and Whereas then on your it right, was... it's a 40 foot climb. Yeah. yeah. It, I was so pleasantly surprised. And it, there was that thing where, where you have, I don't know what it's called, but where you have like a mountain coming and a mountain coming and then there's a valley and there's like three different, I don't know, three different mountains coming together almost. Yeah. But, I yeah, I guess it's a hollow, I guess is what they call it, a holler, if you're, from, if you're from Kentucky. So yeah, it's it was really nice. I was pleasantly surprised. And and there wasn't a lot of ecosystem changes. Right. But there was this one area close to Foster's Creek, one of the crossings, that had this dense, lush fern covering on the ground. Mm -hmm. That was just incredible. I was so 
I was so amazed at how this relatively short trail out in the middle of kind of nowhere near Hendersonville was so beautiful. It really was. Yeah. Very peaceful. Shaded almost the entire way. Yeah. There's very few spots where we were, the sun was on top. At the of beginning of the trail, the way that we went, there were some of those touch me not impatience and they had the little seed pods that explode and I get such a kick out of those plants. <laughs> we have found those on every trail that we've been on so far the past few weeks. Yeah. I can't not touch a touch me not impatient. And I will say this, listeners, yesterday, yesterday was the first time that Donna did not actually shout out loud when it exploded and jump in her back. fingers. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting used to them. So. I mean, she still jumped a little, but but it's so fun. It's so fun to have these little seed pods explode. Yeah. But so I saw those. This time of year is really, really bad for the ragweed pollen. The ragweed pollen it has was been everywhere. crazy. Yeah, it was I everywhere. mean, they're beautiful yellow flowers. I mean, I, I think ragweed and goldenrod kind of get mixed up. They look similar. Yeah. But they make you so sick if you have allergies. They make you so sick. I, I've been using allergy eye drops the allergy nose spray, the Claritin, and <laughs> I, I still- You've been using it all. Yeah. Yeah, you've yeah. been using it all. But, you know, it's, it, it wasn't too bad yesterday, and one of the reviews on this particular trail said that there was a lot of bugs, but we carried the thermocell with us and didn't have any problems with bugs at all. Yeah. Um. Again, it was a rainier day. We had driven out of the rain, but I think sometimes the rain does calm things like bugs and. and you think? I think it actually down. bring uh, the pollen. Yeah, I agree. But I think the rain brings bugs out, especially mosquitoes and mm. stuff. But it's yeah, like you said, the weather's turning, and with that, we saw some trees where the leaves were starting to turn. Yes. Yes, I'm so excited about starting to see fall colors. We saw some maples and some poplars where the upper leaves were just starting to turn a little bit of yellow, a little bit of red. Yeah. We, so yeah. we're looking forward to that in the next month Yeah, with, with it just starting to explode. So what what else would you say about this trail? Um, I brought one hiking pole, not really didn't didn't really feel like i needed it for balance and stuff like that maybe once in a while because honestly with it have been having been wet i learned something yesterday about stepping on the root systems of trees wood is very slippery when it's wet when it's wet yeah yeah i i slip and slided on some roots more than i have ever in the past and i was wearing my keen's boots so yeah, just be careful out there. Yeah, um, be careful. I, I'm glad I had my pole. In the end, I was glad I had my pole because of the spider webs and because of... It's always nice to have a pole if you think you might come across a snake. Although I don't know what I would do if I came across a snake. Just kind of slap the ground in front of it to try to get it to I go I would away. hand you the pole and then back away go, yeah. and say, hey, here's something you need to, to handle. Now, one thing I will say, bears are in the area. We didn't see any. We heard some tree stuff. We heard some stuff. some rustling, and there was, I was a big on, old branch that fell yeah. from something. Yeah, it was the the branch that fell was easily three inches in in diameter, and and it it fell not on the trail. It was just off, off to the, the trail. Yeah, but we were wondering what caused that to happen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, probably it was just the rain on an old branch. That, probably that it weighs down, but it's the forest is so dense on this trail that your visibility into the trees is not very high. At this point in the year. Yeah. When, so, yeah. When the so I was keeping an eye out. So if you're out there, just keep an eye out for it. You yeah. Know? Bears will mostly leave you alone unless you startle them or mess with them. So just just keep that in mind. Maybe it was a Sam Squanch that a Sasquatch that was trying to, you know, like tree knock or something. Uh, maybe. We didn't hear any tree knocking. We did hear rustling, mostly squirrels and stuff. Yeah, like it's that. probably. Yeah. Probably squirrels. Yeah, but. No, overall, this was a nice little trail that was a last minute selection for us. I was really surprised at how pleasant of a trail it was. And like I said, we did the whole thing and didn't see a single person. Mm -hmm. So if you want a nice secluded one in the Hendersonville, Asheville area, that's not too far. I mean, it took us like 12 minutes from Hendersonville to get to it. So it's real close. Yeah. And I, it was great. It was a great little, I would recommend this to anybody who wants a, a woods trail. You're not going to see a lot of vistas, or or any, for that matter, and no waterfalls. No waterfalls, but 
there the little creek areas, the Foster Creek, Foster's Creek, Foster's Creek. Fo- yeah. yeah, that was an adorable little creek. It's not very big. What three feet wide in some spots? Maybe a little, a little bit it more. But it babbled over, moves. over yeah. rocks and stuff, and yeah, it just was really pretty. It was nice, and you could hear it in several point, points of the of yeah. the loop. Yeah, yeah, I liked this trail. I I was pleasantly surprised, and I think what I liked the most about it was just the different elevations. Mm-hmm. Like you go around a curve, and then you're looking down into a valley, and then you know you go around the next curve, and you're looking at the at the creek rolling down the mountain, and then the next curve you're looking up into the, into the mountain top. It's it was great. I I actually really quite like this. Yeah. So would you recommend this? To anybody? Oh yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, uh, if you got an hour to spend, you know, and you're you're in the Hendersonville Asheville area, definitely check out Foster's Creek Trail. Mm-hmm. So that's our trail snacks episode this week, guys. Foster's Creek Trail in Horseshoe, North Carolina, which is just outside Hendersonville. It's a nice two-mile hike through a dense hardwood forest that was way more beautiful than I expected. So I highly recommend it. Yeah. Very much. Thank you so much for listening. Please subscribe to us in whatever podcast app you use and be sure to leave us a review because that's how our show grows. Feel free to check out our trail photos at casualclimbers.com. And if you have a question, comment, or just want to drop us a line, you can reach us at casualclimberspodcast at gmail.com. So Donna, you've been saying you want to get some of those touch me not impatience for our backyard. Yeah. I don't know if I could get them to grow though. They do like to grow near water. Yeah. We don't really have a water source like a, a lake. We don't even pond. have a hose in the backyard. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> so, so, but I mean- how many years would it take for you to stop jumping every time you touch? Oh my it? gosh, I just would have so much fun with that. And <laughs> the, the, the seed pods, I mean, those seeds would be, we'd have so many. We, we'd have so many. <laughs> I, you know, what would be funny is to get Salem to touch one of them and have it explode on him. No, I don't, I don't know. So I'm not trying to torture our cat, PETA. If you're listening, don't come at me. <laughs> but Salem's curious. He'd probably go after it. He might, he might. He'd get a kick out of like grasshoppers getting freaked out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He'd enjoy that. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thanks for listening. See you out on the trail. <laughs> Bye.